Pylon uh, there. 7.37. It's Friday, April 30th. Let's uh, keep it in the KUAM News Zoom Room where Dr. Ho Wen, the Physician's Advisory Group Chair, is standing by. Is he ready? Yes, he is. Hey, Doc. Good morning, Doc. Unmute, unmute. Unmute, okay. All right. Good morning, Doc. How are you? Uh, good morning, Chris. Right. Hey, good you morning. haven't you haven't been to India recently, have you? No, no, I haven't been to India. I'm not quite sure. It's a long, long plane ride, so no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What can you tell us about this whole thing, Doc? I know you know something. I know. I can tell. Just what whatever you can so, share um, with it, Doc. I tell you, um, I, thought, I just read a lot of stuff on the web about this incidents about the two physicians that get back from India and um, and fully vaccinated to get the, the virus. And, you know, um, I, I think that they need to understand one thing. Okay, so you, if you're fully vaccinated, it doesn't mean that, again, you won't get the virus. Uh, no, that's not intention. Um, the intention is, no, you can get the virus, but but your, your symptom will be much less severe. Um, you know, it's very mild, and then um, they decrease the risk of you um, being hospitalized. And that's the main reason why. And, you know, um, most of us, if we get the virus, uh, hopefully it would become, uh, we're still asymptomatic, but we are symptomatic. We will just have mild symptoms. Now, they get back on island after they travel to India for whatever the reason is, you know, from, um, they, they, and they are, are considered essential worker as a healthcare worker, and that's follow the CDC guideline. And you can you can do that. You know they get the seventy two hours pre arrival PCR testing is negative, and uh, the GMH and at any clinic um, guidelines that before you start working, you will get tested again the, the day after you arrive, and that's what they did. They they get tested and they negative still. Now. Well, um, as a central worker, you know, at GMH, um, they they are wearing double masks. That means that at workplace, they they do wear double masks, take all the precaution uh, to protect themselves and protect the patient. Um, so they went and get tested, and um, uh, as they're supposed to, and then when test positive, they get. Uh, they get uh, placed on isolation uh, for the rest of the time. From my understanding is that they are fully recovered already and they just need to finish their uh, 10 days isolation and they can re resume working again. Um, as you can see, when you practice the 3W um, and the socialism mask and, and the hand washing, um, you know, GMH did a wonderful job and, and, and do all the contact tracing um, um, with all the uh, people that come in contact with um, the two physician, and again, there's zero case come out of this um, incident that anyone turned positive except the two physician. So that should prove to you that if you, you know, do your three W, uh, even if you have the virus, you know, uh, you really minimize the risk of passing on to anyone. So, and that's. The, the, the part of the being a central worker and, and get the exam and go to work and go home uh, uh, and pass the 3W, that's the responsibility that, that we trust the essential worker to follow uh, when they travel on the off island and then come back on island. Mm. Uh, and, and to me, uh, it's the incidents uh, unfortunately has happened, but again, um, they followed the rule and uh, Jim actually what they had to do. Uh, and uh, again, just beside them, they get sick, but no one else gets sick. Uh, now, I understand that one of the specimen will be sent to CDC for, um, you know, to do further testing, make sure that it's not any type of variant. Um, but uh, again, um, they both fully recover and none of them need to be uh, in the hospital or anything like that. It's very mild symptom. So that's the bottom line. They yeah. they do follow the guideline, and again, um, uh, there's zero incidents. There's no positive on a close contact for these two physicians. Well, that well, that's definitely a good news, doc. Yes, yeah. You, know, you you see the difference in the Subaki and the A lounge when you have no mask, 
and with close contact, yes, it will mm-hmm. transmit. Mm-hmm. But when you have a double mask, um, you know, uh, requirement and um, uh, in the workplace, uh, you have zero positive come out of that. Well, you're making so, me want to go get another mask right now. <laughs> uh, no, one mask is good, but, you know, double mask is okay. It's hard to breathe out of this thing. But uh, yeah, yeah. again, you know, um, um, no, my no, no well wish for them, but I understand they recover very well. So, and again, you know, um, Chris, no, they are truly, truly part of the essential worker. You know, yeah, and, um, yeah, yeah. the island can probably triple the number of physicians and we're still in the shortage of physician. So, you know, uh, and their and their role in taking care of the, the, the sick patient at the hospital, uh, yeah, they have to be there. I know they take some risk, uh, but they, they do take on the precaution and protect themselves, protect the, the, the patient that they take care of. Doc, what about the transmission though? Do you think that it was, uh, they caught it in India or because one of them cared for a COVID positive patient here on Guam? Because that's what, to me, is, yeah. is kind of interesting is that they tested negative or they had the negative yeah. test result when they came in, then they eventually tested positive. So so just doing, like, the math on it, what do you think? Uh, doing the math on it, I mean, they get back in the 17th. Um, they, uh, again, the policy at the clinic and at the GMH that you get tested the next day before you start working again. So you have two tests uh, that is negative. So they got sick uh, a few days later, so their math, um, yeah, the possibility that they catch on the way to travel, you know, they can catch in India, they can catch on the plane, you know, so it's very hard to, to tell when you travel, um, you know, as you can see on the, when you wait at the airport, it's a six feet, right? The distance, social distance, but I don't know, when you get in the plane, they pack you like a sardine can. So, I mean, uh, this is, um, there's, you can wear your mask in the plane, but yeah, there's a risk. Uh, that during travel that you will catch something from somebody. That's why when the, when there's a positive um, person in the plane, you know, they they kind of quarantine, you know, a few rows in front of you and a few rows behind you. So um, to make sure that, you know, um, that you don't pass the device to anyone. You know, as much as the airflow in the plane from, from I think from, from up the, to down, so it's a downflow, of the air, you still can um, can still catch your virus during your travel. So uh, it's very hard to tell if they catch that from India or during their travel mm. or even back in Guam. But again, um, the key here is uh, if you use the 3W, um, you minimize the risk of transmission of the virus. Doc, you know, this is a lot of people talking about quarantine and the path to half. Uh, and I remember you had said, I want to say like a month or so ago that you guys were going to be reviewing uh, some of the exemptions that you're granting and maybe tightening because of the variance, who is getting exemptions or what type of workers are getting uh, exemptions. Is this going to affect the quarantine moving forward? Uh, no, it's not affect the quarantine. That's a different thing from uh, the exemption is from public health standpoint. They, um, they have a team to decide who's going to get exempt. And, um, we, you know, um, the PAC um, have not worked public health on that issue on mm-hmm. who's exam, um, uh, who's um, who's applying for it. Um, but um, what we're working on is really to come up with new quarantine guidelines based on the latest CDC guidelines just to try to open our island, make the travel uh, a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we, um, we come up with the, um, you know, uh, last night with, uh, with, with public health and certain cell in the pack. And I think what we've come up with is um, we present this morning to the governor and, and I'm sure she's going to release that um, uh, within today or tomorrow because May 1st is tomorrow. Yeah. What about the path to half? Where are we right now? What's the count? You know, as of yesterday morning, um, uh, we already 50.4%. So uh, excluding... Uh, the UOG parts and the outreach yesterday. So I'm very sure that we we are in the 50 at this point. So we and reached again, the path to half? That... Wait, hold on. We reached the path to half already? <laughs> yes, we did. What? And, uh, again, thank you. Uh, thank you for the people of Guam to doing it. It's the first milestone that we reach. And we will continue to, to um, 
uh, to reach for the, the, the next and final milestone is to make sure that the island get into total herd immunity, which around 7 to 80%. So that's what we're going to still try to reach. Um, it's, uh, it's harder to get to that, um, to that yeah. level, yeah. Uh, but we're going to do some extra stuff to try to get easier for people to get the vaccine so we can get there a lot sooner. And I think that we get there a lot sooner. Uh, Doc, we had a comment here. Uh, I know I got Chima coming on later, so I don't know if you can answer this or him. Are residents coming back to Guam from Saipan uh, still required to do hotel quarantine? Um, you know, um, if you fully vaccinated um, and, you know, the new quarantine guy, I will let the governor have the first chance of doing <laughs> that. But uh, the, this, um, I kind of thought... And the most important thing, right, um, I for you this morning, the, the, the latest CDC guideline um, on the traveling. And um, and and we, we're going to base on that. First. You know, uh, uh, those, uh, you can argue against the science. We're not just pulling things out of uh, the air somewhere, but that's truly a, a, a based on the CDC. And uh, I will try to be as much as possible get that on the air or on Facebook, something so people can can see it and see what we base it on, you know, and um, uh, there's a table there um, at the at the bottom end of table two that kind of as a risk reduction um, uh, the, you know, percentage that we try to base our decision on. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, I mean, based on that, we make decision, hey, if you're fully vaccinated, you're partially vaccinated, or you um, not vaccinated, uh, what the risk of you taking or carrying the virus into the island through your travel. So um, I think that um, it's, a, it's a first step that we that we changed the quarantine guidelines since August of last year. Uh, and so we see how it does in the next few weeks, and then we will change again if the, um, if the island continues to do well. Let me ask you this one, Doc. You ready? This, this... This is a tough one uh, from a friend of mine on the WhatsApp. Honest question. I keep hearing that we're trying to get to herd immunity. So the vaccine doesn't make someone immune. How does it lead to herd immunity? I really am so confused every time I hear this and no one else seems okay. to be curious about it. It's a good question, Doc, because I okay. mean, yeah. Yeah, it's an excellent question. Like I said, when, uh, the, remember the key of the vaccine and um uh, is that number one? It decreases your symptom, the severity of your symptom. You gotta remember that, okay? Number two, it cut down your risk of being in the hospital and the death um, rate. Those are two main things about the, the vaccine, okay? Herd immunity means that the majority of, of our uh, people on the island have the antibody uh, to fight the virus if you catch the virus. That's herd immunity. You know, um, you're never going to get this COVID to zero. It's impossible. You can have a whole bunch of COVID positive in the community, but if you have no one in the hospital, that's what you want, okay? No life loss, okay? That's what you want. So as we go toward this herd immunity, you can see possibility that the car score might be a little bit off, compared to the people in the hospital. Herd immunity, even if you have a natural immunity from the infection, remember, if you get infected by COVID-19 back in, the, in August, September, and you have antibody, you have immunity to it for up to three to four months, but doesn't mean that you will not get the virus again. You know, you're still going to get it. So herd immunity means that Yes, a majority of us will have the antibody, and if we have the virus, uh, we won't be so sick. So we get to 80% herd immunity on the island. You know, yes, people will come in with the COVID-19 virus, and uh, will infect someone on the island. But again, the chance that if you're asymptomatic, you're less likely to transmit the virus. That's number one. If you're symptomatic, then you won't be as sick and you won't be in the hospital. Um, you cannot have 100% zero COVID-19 through herd immunity. So herd immunity definition means that the majority of us will have the antibodies to fight the virus 
and uh, this minimize the, the hospitalization and minimize the, the loss of life. That's that's her immunity. So I hope I answered the question of people that, that yeah. don't think that her immunity means that there's zero COVID ever. That's impossible. So herd immunity is not herd immunity. Herd immunity, no, I mean, herd immunity the, is you're not going to get that sick the, the, and stay at the hospital and. Yes, that's that's a key. I mean, there's a, there's impossible for us to completely wipe this thing off the yeah. map of the earth. There's no way. You know, they just it's a virus, just like the flu. You know, so um, the more people we immunize, the the less risk that we're going we're going to get you know, that severely sick, and the less risk we end up in the hospital. And you know, so that's what we want to do. So at some point, you know. Um, I mean, we do the best we can to try to prevent the, uh, the device from getting the island, but if it does, um, not to make people get sick, that, that's that's the key. Uh, Doc, I messaged the uh, Adeloop Communications Director, Crystal Paco, uh, if, if we were anticipating any announcement today on easing of restrictions or quarantine. Uh, she responded, good morning, Chris. The proposed changes are still under review. I hope to have more info later this morning. Again, can you just tell us what was what is the PAG's recommendation to the governor regarding quarantine now that we've achieved the path? Guys, we achieved the path to have, according to Dr. Hoa also, by the way. Yes, we, we do. And, you know, again, yes, there's a, there's a huge difference in the quarantine guidelines compared to August. Again, this is the first time that we changed it quite a bit um on the the traveling um especially with uh if you fully vaccinated um person um with verification there's a huge change so uh, again um uh, the change that you will uh, hear from the governor um is is really um um it's a lot of thought behind it and, and again um, we expect to hopefully do more changes in the next few weeks uh, if the Communities uh, are, are doing well uh, with the new guideline. There you go. But that's pending the governor's review and approval, correct? Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's going to be the next day or two, uh, even today, just because you know May first is tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but you know, I, I think we uh, are comfortable with where we are. Um, like I said, I mean, there's a cluster out there, the, the, so back in the A lounge, but look like um, public health um, um, uh, did a lot of good job out there to try to uh, contact tracing, identify the positive. Um, and the cost score, I think it will go down. All right. And um, people in the hospital is not that sick. There's no one in the ICU, and I believe uh, uh, no one Okay, so I, I messaged Crystal again because I was like, Hoa said we achieved the path to half already. Um, and she responded, okay. yes, they're just waiting on the DOD count based on the last unofficial numbers they provided last week, 7,000. Um, we should be at the path to half. So I said we need yes. a ticker. We should have had like a ticker on the Adelou front lawn, like <laughs> path to half and every shot they change it one time. And then, you know. Yes. Because uh, I thought we were going to have a party. I thought we were going to have a party. We are there. No, 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 no. You still have to wear masks. What? <laughs> no, we get. We will get to a point where we, we will change a whole lot. But uh, you have to admit uh, what we have right now in the community with business opening up uh, is wonderful to see. And that's what we like to, to see. You know? I mean, it's wonderful to go to the restaurant and, and see that it's almost full. And uh, people are comfortable. Um, uh, eating out and, and, and do some stuff. But again, just remind people that if um, you walk around in the public place, no, please put your mask on and, and, and don't let that down yet. Right on, Doc. Uh, so okay. what's the, the next one is, what is it, like path to 80 or something? Because we they want to uh, we we do 80%. We, we're going to recommend some phase, you know, we have some, uh, you know, 65%, 75%. So we, we do bit, uh, some small step to make sure that uh, as we change the guideline, we release some restriction that, um, you know, uh, we monitor the hospital very carefully. You know, it's, it's not so much really a positive in the, in the community, 
is how much the hospital can handle. And, you know, I mean, um, uh, according to, to GMH, you know, the 10 people uh, is where in the hospital, that's where there's the, there's a red light going up and say, you got to be careful. So right. um, uh, the number in the hospital is, is 10. We, we have to stay below 10. Right. Doc, uh, there's a question here. Has anyone in the hospital with COVID been fully vaccinated already? Um, you know, right now, um, I don't think that no one in the hospital that fully is vaccinated. I mean, that, um, there's, a, I think, five or six people in the hospital, but those are very mild symptoms, and mm-hmm. I don't, none of them are, are, are vaccinated. Right. You know, from, uh, like I said, the, the two physicians that fully vaccinated, they have very mild symptoms, so they isolate at home. They don't need hospitalization. Right on. Okay. And they recover writing. Okay. Well, thank you, Doc. Let's come You're up with something. Guys. We had to come up. So we had Pat the half, but now we're trying to go to 80 for the herd immunity. So we needed what rhymes yes. with 80 or herd and, immunity. And I tell you, tend to for people really go out there and vaccinate it and, and, and you know, to uh, really do for yourself, do for your family, and do for the community. And, and that's what it all is all about. We have to do uh, to, to kind of think about someone else next to you. Yeah. And that's the key. So, you know, uh, um, please go out there and get the vaccine. We're going to make it um, more easy uh, for you to access the vaccine. Okay, so uh, get out there and, and do your part and, and protect the whole island. Uh, everyone count. Right on. Yep, we're going to monetize okay. it, Doc. That's what we need to do. We need to be like, okay, if you're the 75,000th vaccination, <laughs> we're going to give you 100 bucks. If you're the 80th, you get 1,000. <laughs> Just thinking out loud, Doc, or you start holding people stimulus checks. Like, hey, you can't get this check until you get the shot. <laughs> um, we have to be nicer than that. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Have a good day, Chris. All right. Bye. Dr. Ho Wen, he's the chair of the Physicians Advisory Group. Uh, good morning. It's Friday. Friday! Whoa! We're going to take a quick break and coming back on KUAM TV.